Welcome to an overview of child abuse prevention efforts in California, brought to you by Strategies TA. This video is for new prevention partners wanting to know more about California's prevention efforts and the work that has occurred since 2019. After watching this video, you will be able to understand your role in child abuse prevention. Amplify your voice in local prevention efforts. Understand the key components of the Comprehensive Prevention Plan, also known as the CPP, and learn why prevention is so important. In this video, we will review a historical background on prevention efforts in California, the Family First Prevention Services Act, FFVSA, the Family First Prevention Services, FFVS, program, the Comprehensive Prevention Plan, CPP, an overview of funding, the protective factors and social determinants of health, and an example of community pathways. Why is California focusing on prevention, the health, well-being, and quality of life of children, families, and communities are impacted by their environments? When we provide optimal conditions for families, we reduce the risk for child maltreatment. When families are healthy and happy, communities thrive. Before we talk about the history of the prevention movement in California, let's define what we mean by child and family well-being. When families are healthy, safe, and economically stable, their children's health and well-being can thrive. This includes physical well-being, economic well-being, social well-being, development and activity emotional well-being, psychological well-being, life satisfaction, domain-specific satisfaction, engaging activities and work. Prevention planning discussion began after a presentation from Dr. Robin Jenkins to the Child Welfare Director's Prevention Cabinet on the value of prevention. This presentation sparked a discussion about planning a statewide prevention summit where cross-collaborative county-led teams could begin to imagine prevention at the center of their child and family well-being systems. In preparation for the summit, counties had to develop cross-collaborative teams that included community partners such as First Five and Child Abuse Prevention Councils. 33 counties applied, and 22 were selected to attend. In January of 2019, 225 participants from 22 counties attended the first prevention convening where topics related to the importance of prevention were discussed. Teams also had the opportunity to share successful prevention programs and strategies, as well as create an action plan for their counties. This timeline illustrates the convening events that have occurred to help teams build their capacity in prevention strategies and connect to the statewide network. Let's talk about the legislative changes that made all of this possible. The Family First Prevention Services Act, FFPSA, was included in the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Bill in February of 2018 and went into effect in October of 2019. It provided the most major changes in foster care funding in a generation. This bill provided prevention services in their entitlement along with funds for children in care. California was required to submit a five-year plan to opt into the Family First Services Act funding. They submitted their plan, which was approved. California passed AB 153, which created the State Block Grant Program. The State Block Grant allowed expanded prevention services to children and families. Counties were required to create a cross-collaborative, comprehensive prevention plan. Counties had to submit their plan by July 31, 2023. These plans had to include primary, secondary, and tertiary services. In April of 2022, Counties were offered the opportunity to opt into the Families First Prevention Services program with a promise of a state block grant that could fund primary prevention activities. So, what makes up the California Family First Prevention Services program? Federal dollars are utilized through the FFVSA program. These are used to provide families with secondary and tertiary services. The state block grant can be utilized for primary prevention efforts as well as secondary and tertiary programs. 
We'll talk a little more about the funding that goes into this program. This slide illustrates the funding programs available to use for preventative services. FFVSA can be used to help keep families out of the child welfare system. It can also be used to prevent families who have had previous interaction from re-entering. This program requires the use of evidence-based practices. FFVS can be used to provide education and support to all families in the community. It does not require the use of evidence-based practices. Counties may also integrate existing prevention and child welfare funding dollars, such as CBCAP and FFDA, to supplement their services and programming. FFVSA and the California FFVS program are different funding streams that provide different levels of prevention services. FFVSA is federal funding that reimburses states for services for children in imminent risk of entering the foster care system. The California FFVS program authorizes state funds to be used to support prevention activities for both the general and at-risk populations. So what is a comprehensive prevention plan? A comprehensive prevention plan creates a system where all families can access the services and support they need. It requires family strengthening organizations such as family resource centers, child abuse prevention councils, and county social services to collaborative and align efforts to center overall child and family well-being. Comprehensive prevention plans address three levels of prevention strategies. Tertiary services are when interventions are provided for children already experiencing maltreatment. Secondary services or programs are provided to alleviate identified problems to prevent intervention. Primary programs target the entire population to provide information and support before problems arise listed suggested partners in the creation and implementation of the CPP. Evidence-based practices are research-supported interventions that include best practices and provides the most effective and efficient care for a client. California identified 10 evidence-based practices, or EBPs, from a recommended list from the federal government. All prevention activities and services utilizing FFVSA funding are required to utilize EBPs. A list of the EBPs selected by the State of California are listed on the California Evidence-Based Clearinghouse website. The Comprehensive Prevention Plan aims to serve the highest risk groups. These can include Native American slash American Indian children and their families, African American children and their families, LGBTQ plus youth, children and families receiving voluntary or court-ordered services, youth with probation petitions pending before the court, children whose guardianship or adoption is at risk of disruption, children with a substantiated or inconclusive case of reported maltreatment, children with siblings in foster care, homeless or runaway youth, substance-exposed newborns, trafficked youth, children exposed to domestic violence, children whose caregivers suffer from substance abuse, youth facing other serious risk factors. The Protective Factors is a framework utilized by many county child abuse prevention planning teams to guide the interventions offered in their communities. Protective factors are characteristics or strengths of individuals, families, communities, or societies that act to mitigate risks and promote positive well-being and healthy development. When families demonstrate competence in these five areas, the chances of child abuse and neglect decrease, and the likelihood of developing a healthy and supportive environment for optimal child development emerges. Some county prevention planning teams incorporated the social determinants of health into their comprehensive prevention plans. The social determinants of health are identified conditions in which people work, live, and play. These conditions contribute to health outcomes. As we improve them for communities, we help increase the health and wellness of communities. These conditions contribute to healthy, thriving families and the reduction of child maltreatment. Here are some examples of social determinants of health connected to primary prevention strategies. Education access tutoring support, general education development, GED, 
College and Career Counseling English as a Second Language, ESL Head Start Universal Preschool Parenting Classes Family Resource Centers, FRC Healthcare and Quality Health Insurance Health Education School-Based Health and Mental Health Timely Therapy Slash Counseling Medication Management Inpatient and Outpatient Treatment Family Resource Centers, FRC Neighborhood and Built Environment Access to Grocery Stores Legal Aid Gang Diversion Programs Clean Air Initiatives Community Beautification Support to Healthy Food Merchants Community Safety Initiatives Economic Stability Food Banks and Cooperatives, Co-op Women Infants and Children, WIC. Housing Vouchers. Subsidized Child Care. Child Credits. Social and Community Context. Neighborhood Councils. Neighborhood Events. School-Based Programming. Leadership Development. Advocacy Organizations. Family Resource Centers, FRC. The Community Pathways serve as a way for families to get the support they need without being referred to child welfare. This was an optional part of the Comprehensive Prevention Plan, although many counties opted to develop a community pathway. Let's look at an example of how a family might experience a community pathway. Scenario, a family comes into a community-based organization looking for help. Pathway 1, on the left, the family shares they are looking for resources to access basic needs such as food and clothing. Pathway 2, on the right, the family shares that they are struggling and have more intensive needs. For the family looking for concrete supports like food and housing resources, they would receive a warm handout to a partner agency. This could look like 1. The family meets with the organization to share about their needs. 2. Then the family receives resources and support and are connected with referrals as needed. The referring agency would check in with the family to make sure they were able to utilize the services. For the family that had more intense needs, they would be referred to a child and family service provider. This may look like 1. The family meets with a service provider for an intake assessment. 2. The family and service provider creates a prevention plan together. 3. The family receives supportive services. 4. The local child and family services agency continues to support the family along the way. Are you interested in becoming involved in your county's prevention efforts? Here are some questions that can help direct you to your next steps. 1. Do you know what is in your county's comprehensive prevention plan? 2. Are you connected to capacity building and training resources like Caltrin, Strategies TA, or FFPSA website? through the California Department of Social Services. Three, do you need more information about your county's CPP? Four, what can you contribute to supporting families in prevention? The following websites can offer comprehensive information on the Families First Prevention Service Act, as well as efforts occurring at both at the state and local county level. For more information on FFBSA, check out the California Department of Social Services website. For capacity building opportunities, visit the Caltrin website. For network and peer sharing opportunities, visit the Strategies TA website. Thank you for watching this video on California's prevention efforts.